Greetings, church family, and uh, truly it was wonderful to listen to those testimonies. Uh, we want to thank those of you who shared those testimonies with us, and it always encourages us to hear from you, to know what God is doing in your lives, uh, whether it's a miracle of healing, whether it's just uh, a strengthening of your personal walk with God, uh, learning, uh, receiving revelation of God's Word, seeing insights, all of these testimonies encourage us in the work that we're doing to serve you, to serve the Lord. I want to share with you uh, another testimony that came in. This was uh, came, this came in by email on Saturday, the 9th of May. It had to do with one of the sermon series that's, that this person listened to. So the subject of the email is uh, Mind Transforming Sermon Series. And this person writes, I recently happened to go through your sermon series, Timeless Principles for the Workplace. The whole series was really mind transforming and thought provoking. There were a lot of takeaways for me from this. It was a new revelation to me that God is not opposed to us increasing in knowledge or understanding, provided our mind is subjected to his will. I had the misconception that God wanted us to know only spiritual matters. It was always quite it was also quite eye-opening to know that God is not against us making money or prospering. I always had confusion regarding this thought. It was also very encouraging to know that we could cry out to God and ask the Holy Spirit for new, in, new and innovative ideas at every point of our work. Almost around the week, I had completed the sermons. I was blessed with a promotion during this lockdown which came in as a miracle and fully a gift from God. I praise God and uh, thank you for the words of wisdom that you have shared in the sermon series that has cleared a lot of confusion in my mind. I'm trying to apply whatever I have learned with the help of the Holy Spirit and desire to see a change in my own actions and thoughts. I'm also motivated to watch the other sermons through this as I'm convinced now that God is interested in each and every detail of our lives and God's word has answers to clear our doubts. Praise God. So, so it's wonderful to read this testimony, and I want to encourage those of you who are watching us just to remind you, you know, there are over 60 sermon series available on our church website. You just have to go to the apcw.org forward slash sermons. Um, there are over 15 years of sermons that, that, have, that are available there all for free, along with the sermon notes, so you could study it, our free publications are also available. If you go to apcw.org slash books, uh, we have uh, several books available, all free. You can download them and read them. We're also in the process of uh, getting audiobooks out. We'll get the audiobooks out. So those of you who like, just like to listen, you can also listen to these books when you're you know, doing whatever, driving or uh, working out or whatever you're doing, you can listen to all these audiobooks as well. Another thing that we are working on is uh, just creating a multilingual platform so that we can release our content, uh, these sermons, these books, these audiobooks in other languages, Indian languages primarily to start off with. So we're working towards that so that, you know, we can really bless the body of Christ across our nation with the word of God, with the work of the Holy Spirit, so that the body of Christ can be strengthened. So make use of these resources and of course tell other people uh, to go and make use of these resources from our church website and uh, our publications and so on. I want to take a moment to welcome all of you who are first time viewers. If uh, this is the first time you're connecting with us through this medium online, we want to welcome you. Thank you for being with us. We I'd encourage you uh, if you go to our church website, apcwo.org, on the far right corner of uh, the website, uh, on the homepage, on the far right corner, you'll find a mail icon. If you click on that, you can subscribe to our weekly sermon email. Uh, we send out updates whenever a new book is released, other conferences, conferences and events that, are, that will be coming up once this lockdown period is over. So you can be notified of those things. So we invite you, if you'd like to, just go to our church website, click on the subscribe, the mail icon and subscribe, just enter your email ID and we'll keep you notified of uh, weekly sermons, books and so on that come out. So you could do that. Before we go further into the word of God today, I want to 
uh, just uh, lead us in making our declaration. This is something we do almost every Sunday when we gather together at our various locations in Bangalore. So I want to just go through uh, leading us in our declaration. Now, you don't have to wait for me to complete my sentence. The, the words will come on the screen. So right where you are, we will say it out loud, bold, and strong together. If you want to stand, you can. Otherwise, you're most welcome just to be seated. And let's make our declaration together. Let's say this out loud, bold, and strong together. If you want to, want to you can hold your Bible high up in the air with me. Let's say this together. This is God's word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I am saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of his blessing to many people. I receive his word, I believe his word, and I live by his word. Christ is my master, and to him I am in absolute surrender. I present myself as a new wineskin to receive new wine and fresh oil being poured out on me. God releases new things and a new work of his spirit in me and through me, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Thank you for joining us in the declaration. Uh, we are currently studying the word of God on the mighty name of Jesus. You know, uh, it is just amazing, it's wonderful to study the word of God. And that's one of the, our objectives in ministering the word to strengthen God's people, to strengthen you uh, in your walk with God. And one very important part of our walk with God is to understand the power, the might that's there in the name of Jesus. And so we are spending a few weeks looking at the mighty name of Jesus. So far, we've completed two sermons on this series. If you've missed them, you can always go back and listen to these sermons. They're available on the YouTube, our YouTube channel. They're also available on our church website, so you can go back. And I want to encourage us to please download the book that we have recently released in the same title. It's called The Mighty Name of Jesus. You can go to apcw.org slash books, and you'll find this book available. You can download it onto your device, and please use it as we are studying our way through this uh, series on the mighty name of Jesus. In the book also, there are application reflection questions given, which we encourage you to use in your personal time of reflection, or if you're in a, in, in a life group or a small group that is studying this together, of course, you probably are doing it virtually. When you do that, you can discuss these questions and share your thoughts, your learning, and your insights and you know, help each other grow uh, and get a revelation of the power of the name of Jesus. I wanna quickly review what we've done so far. You know, We began by talking about the name of Jesus, the fact that it is the name above every other name. And the name is great because of the person who is behind that name. And so we you know, did a little bit of uh, description, understanding who is behind the name of Jesus. And then we we went forward as we uh, looked at the Old Testament revelation of the names of God. So this whole understanding of using the name of God as a way to you know connect with God is not only is not just a New Testament thing, but it was right there in the Old Testament as God revealed Himself through various names and titles. The people of God connected with God through the use of his name in their everyday life. So you could say this, and you probably heard this before, that the Lord was as close as the mention of his name. So when people called on the name of the Lord, he was right there with them. And so they engaged with God through uh, calling upon his name or making mention of his name. And then we saw how the transition happened, how when Jesus came and he brought in the name of Jesus. He said, you know, you go in this name, the name of Jesus, and how 
uh, people could transition. The Jewish people were so used to na- using the name of Yahweh, Jehovah, and they transitioned as they believed in Jesus Christ as the Messiah, the Son of God. They began, they, they began to use his name to do the mighty works of God. And so we talked about that. And then we progressed in, 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 in understanding what it means to have delegated authority. So we looked at the life of Jesus when he said, I have come in my Father's name. You know, so Jesus came in the Father's name and, and he represented the Father. He came to reveal the Father and he came uh, authorized by the Father. And so he came in the Father's name and then he sent us in his name. And that's and so it's important for us to understand what it means to carry delegated authority. One of the points we emphasized last Sunday is that delegated authority flows out of this place of union that we have in our relationship. Just as Jesus was in complete union with the Father, you and I as believers need to walk in union with him. That's why Jesus said, I am the wine, you are the branches. So you walk in union with him. And out of that union, we can walk in the delegated authority that's been placed on our lives through the use of his name. So we also explained that Jesus has given us the right to use his name. He endowed us. He gave us the right to use his name. And he gave us what we would call in our modern terms, the power of attorney, which means he has authorized us to use his name, to represent him, to do what he would do if he were there present himself. And in the process, we reveal who Jesus is. So that's what it means to use the name. And so we concluded last Sunday, or as we talked about this, uh, by uh, just uh, giving us insights on what happens when you and I as believers use that name. We said that when you and I use that name, it is we are stepping out on our heavenly authorization. And that's you and I exercising our power of attorney when we say in the name of Jesus. When we say in Jesus' name, you and I are, are, are bringing Jesus in on the scene because when we mention his name, he said, I am there. So Jesus comes on the scene. When you and I step out in the name of Jesus, we are saying, I am here representing Jesus to act on his behalf. I'm here in his place to do what he would do if he were here and present himself. When we say in Jesus' name, it brings the Holy Spirit right there because the Holy Spirit has been sent in the name of Jesus. So the very power of God comes in on the scene. When we say in the name of Jesus, it's as good as Jesus himself being there. That's how powerful it is. That's how significant it is when we use the name of Jesus. And so we said, you know, when we use that name, whether it's in prayer or whether it's in ministering of people or dealing with circumstances and situations in life, we must do it the way Jesus would do it. We must represent him accurately. So we want to go forward from there. I want to uh, emphasize today, this is in chapter eight in the book. Uh, If you are following with me along the book, and I encourage you to do that, uh, chapter A uh, is that we must believe in the name. You see, the name of Jesus is not just a lucky, good luck charm or, you know, some magic or open sesame and all things happen. You know, it's not a, a, a magic word. You know, we must use the name by having faith in the name, in the person behind the name. So we find the New Testament many places where we are called to believe in the name and we're called to believe in him. That means we're believing in the one who's behind the name. Uh, every time we, we are called to believe in the name by believing in the one who is behind that name. And so we must have faith in that name. I want to emphasize that a little bit. You know, we, we just don't just mutter off, just say off that name meaninglessly. Then it's not going to have any impact, any effect. But when we speak that name with faith in that name, then things happen. You know, what, there's one example, or I'll just mention a few uh, in uh, 
in uh, Matthew, the 17th chapter, verses 19, 21, you know, the disciples up until this time have been using the name of Jesus to minister to people. Uh, they have been seeing success. People have been healed. Demons have been cast out. Miracles have been taking place. But then they run into a, 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 an incident where uh, in Matthew 17, 19 to 21, uh, a man brings a son who was uh, uh, troubled by demons, he's suicidal, he tries to kill himself, uh, he's a lunatic, uh, uh, and uh, the disciples of Jesus, who so far had seen success using the name of Jesus, at this point, they're not able to help this young man, this, this father, or this, uh, deliver this young boy, and, uh, and so a little later on, Jesus comes on the scene, and, uh, and this man cries out to Jesus saying, you know, Lord, help me. So Jesus comes in on the scene and delivers this boy, and a little later, the disciples go to Jesus and say, Lord, why could we not cast this demon out? You know, so they have seen success using the name of Jesus, but this time they're using the same name, but they're not, they didn't see success. This boy wasn't delivered. And Jesus gives them an answer in Matthew 17, 28, 21. He said, because of your unbelief. And then he tells them, look, if you have faith, like as a grain of a mustard seed, you can tell the mountain to move, it'll move. Nothing will be impossible to you. And then he says, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. So you see the importance of faith. He says, you know, it was the unbelief that didn't allow you to see what you should have seen. Uh, so there wasn't anything wrong in the name of Jesus. Uh, it was, there was nothing questioning uh, the father's will. God's will was for the boy to be delivered. But they didn't see the boy delivered. Why? Only one reason. Because of your unbelief. And that's what Jesus said. So we understand uh, the importance of using the name of Jesus with faith in our heart. And he just said, you, you have to have faith just as this is simple as, as a mustard seed, and you will see results. And in order for us to quicken our faith, we engage in prayer and fasting, and, and it helps us you know, to strengthen our faith. But faith is what is important there in the use of the name of Jesus. Another great example we see is in Acts, the third chapter. And Peter and John are going into the temple. They see this lame man there who's been, uh, uh, who's been uh, paralyzed from the time of his birth. And uh, uh, Peter and John ministered to him in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he's healed. And Peter, you know, the crowd is amazed. They come running to Peter, and Peter explains to them in Acts 3 and verse 16. He says, you know, this is how it happened. His name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong. Faith given to us from God has made this man perfectly whole. So, once again, when the name is used, you must use it with faith in that name, faith in God. And one more reference there in James chapter 5, uh, verses 14 and 15, and James tells us, you know, if there's anybody sick, you call for the elders of the church, uh, pray for him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. You know, so uh, uh, you're praying, you're praying in the name of the Lord, but it has to be the prayer of faith. You know, Smith Wigglesworth was a man that God used greatly in the early part of the, of the 20th century. Uh, and uh, he was uh, from England. And, uh, and uh, you know, God used him powerfully in healings and miracles. And there are many stories that he shares. And I'm just reminded of one particular story where he was called uh, to go and to pray for this lady who was bedridden. And uh, so he, you know, there were two other people who went with him. So he told uh, the first person to pray. That person was a great prayer warrior and he could pray for long hours. And uh, so Smith Vegas would ask him, what did you used to pray? And so this man, you know, as, as Smith Vegas narrates the incident, he says this man could, you know, circle the world three times in his prayer and come back to the same place. So this man started praying for all kinds of things. He started praying, he said, God, you know, help the bereaved husband. Uh, you know, he's about to lose his wife. And he started praying for the poor and, and in the world. And he started praying all kinds of things going on. And, and Smith Vigglesworth, Smith Wiggles was saying, oh God, just shut him up. You know, just, he's not praying. So there was no ounce of faith in his prayer uh, as, as, as Smith Wiggles would describe it. So finally that man finished his very long prayer 
and uh, nothing was happening. So he called the other man to pray, said, why don't you pray? And so the second man started praying, and he said, oh, God, I, I, I agree with the prayer. My brother prayed, and he kept on, you know, again, just praying all kinds of things. And uh, 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 Smith, because what it says, and he was just hoping that God would shut him up, wait, keep him quiet. So finally he ended his prayer. And then Smith, because what shares what he did, he just took the, he had a bottle of oil, he just took the bottle of oil, put it on this woman, and said, in the name of Jesus. And instantly, this woman was healed. You see, that's the difference. It's in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith. And so often, we, we make all these long prayers, long, you know, worldwide prayer tours, and they don't make, if it's not prayed in faith, it may, amounts to nothing, but rather a simple prayer, pray with faith in the name of the Lord, will cause results, will cause things to happen. And that's what I want to impress on our hearts, that when we use the name of Jesus, the scriptures clearly telling us we must have faith in that name. The prayer of faith will cause uh, the, the power that's in that name to be released. So I want to encourage you and me uh, to step out and use the name of Jesus. Now I'm in chapter 9 in the book, and as believers, we must understand that what we have made available to us in Jesus' name, and we must step out boldly on that. You know, uh, in that same incident uh, that we referenced about Peter and John walking into the temple, and they see this man who's laying uh, from the, from his birth, uh, whom they brought daily to uh, to, uh, to lay, lay this man at the at the gate of the temple so that he could beg, uh, and as Peter and John were passing by, and this man was begging uh, for alms, and uh, Peter and John stopped, and Peter says, "Look on us." And so this this layman looked at Peter, Peter and John, expecting to receive some money, but what did Peter say? Peter says, Acts chapter 3 and verse 6, the Bible records, verses 6 and 7, the Bible records for us. Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. See, Peter knew that he had something. It was the name of Jesus, and he knew what was in that name. What could be done in that name? So many of us, we know we have the name of Jesus, but we don't know what's in that name. We don't know what the name can unleash for us, whether it's in our own lives, in the circumstances that we face, or when we are ministering to people, that there is authority, there is dominion in that name. You see, the Bible says that you and I are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. The Bible says that you and I will reign in life through Jesus Christ. That means you and I are going to have dominion. You see, when there are storms and winds that come against your life, of course, it's going to cause uh, confusion in your mind. Of course, it might disturb you uh, uh, initially. But you need to know that you can reign, you can dominate over them. You can exercise authority over them, whether it's in your own personal life, whether it's in your business or in your workplace, wherever these storms are raging. The Bible says that you reign in life through Jesus Christ. And how can you reign through Jesus? He's given you the right to use his name. So you stand up and do what Jesus would do if he faced that storm. If he faced those winds and waves, what would he do? He would rebuke them and say, peace be still. And so you stand up there and rebuke the storm and you do it in Jesus' name. You need to know what's in that name. Such as I have, I give. Such as I have, I exercise. Such as I have, I, I use it. I use that name. In, in, and in the name of Jesus, you dominate your circumstances, you dominate your situations, and you minister to people. So know and act on what you have in the name of Jesus. You know, God's power God's authority is released when we step out boldly uh, in the name of Jesus to do what Jesus wants us to do. One of the things that will really, really uh, motivate us or encourage our hearts, give us this confidence, is for us to know who we are in Christ. That's another important thing, for you to be established 
in your identity in Christ. You know, many of us, many people suffer, uh, you know, with a poor self-image. They think they cannot do anything. Uh, they, there's a, a feeling of insufficiency. Uh, and all of that will, you know, be gone when you know who you are in Christ, that who you are in Christ is who you really are. That's your true identity spiritually. And you live out of that spiritual identity. So it'll give you confidence to move in authority and dominion and use the name of Jesus. Now, before we go forward in, in this message, I want us to just take a few moments to sing a song together. Our worship team is going to help us. We're going to sing a little chorus, an old chorus uh, about the name of Jesus and just worship him together. And then we will continue forward uh, in this message. so much worship team and we're going to continue forward as we uh, study the word of God here we are uh, we want to just move forward and I'm in chapter 10 in uh, the book so we have mentioned the uh, that we have to use the name of Jesus in faith and we have to have confidence step out and use act boldly in the name of Jesus from now on the remainder of this series, we're going to talk about different things that are there in the name and how that applies to our own lives and also when we minister to people. So we're going to go to several things that the New Testament un unveils for us. And we're going to unpack it. It's like, you know, this box that has uh, hundreds of gifts in it. And you open the box and you pull out one gift, you pull out another, you pull out another and pull out another. It's loaded. And, and that's what is there in the name of Jesus. And so starting from now, we're going to pull out those gifts one by one. All of this is in that one name. So I'm going to go to that very quickly. There are many scriptures that are given in the in the in the book that that we've made available to you. But I might just reference one or two and cover a few things. So first of all, there is forgiveness in the name of Jesus. First John chapter two verse twelve says, "I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake." Why are sins forgiven? Sins are forgiven because of the name of Jesus. How does this apply to you and me? See, when you and I do something wrong, when we sin, when we do something that's, uh, that displeases God, and we realize, oh God, I'm sorry, I should not have said that, I should not have done that, or you know, I realize I've done something that offends the heart of God, what must I do? The Bible says we must confess our sins, and He is faithful and just to forgive us 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, why can he do that? Because sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. So when you go to the Father and say, Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to forgive me. You know, that is so powerful. Why? Because the name of Jesus represents the one who has already paid for that sin. And on the basis of that name, our sins can be forgiven. See, God doesn't forgive you your sins because you've cried so much. God doesn't forgive you your sins because you knelt down by your bed for one hour. God doesn't forgive you your sins because you feel so remorseful. No, he cannot forgive sins on the basis of those things. He forgives our sins for the name of Jesus, for his name's sake, because that represents the one who paid for every sin. You know, so remember that, that when you pray and say, Father, in Jesus' name, forgive me. The very person whose name you're mentioning is at the right hand of the Father who says, Father, I've paid for that on the cross. His sins are forgiven. Secondly, chapter 11, there is salvation in Jesus' name. Acts chapter 4 and verse 12 says, Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. There is salvation in that name, in the name of Jesus. So when we call upon the name, the Bible says, whoever calls upon that name, they will be saved. Now, as you said in the very first sermon, the word salvation in the New Testament is a comprehensive word. It means forgiveness of sins. It means being rescued from hell. It means being healed of sickness. It means being delivered from demonic powers. Uh, it means being uh, set free from anything that oppresses us and uh, keeps us in bondage. Uh, it means being preserved and protected from danger. It also means victory and triumph over enemies. So sal the word salvation includes all of that. And the Bible says there is salvation in the name of Jesus. So if you need salvation, we need salvation. What do we do? Call on that name. Mention that name. Know that there is salvation in that name. And when you say that name, you are expect. You say that name in faith. You're expecting salvation to come in to be ministered to you in that moment. In that name, there is salvation in that name. And so, uh, you know, just speaking that name, Smith Wigglesworth, once again, I mentioned his stories. Uh, and you find all these stories in one of the, one of the books called uh, Ever Increasing Faith. Uh, he shares the story of, a, again, a person lying flat uh, in, a, in, a, in a condition completely given up. He takes with him about seven other people and all he tells them to do is just stand around this person and just mention the name of Jesus. So they stand around the sick person, this invalid, and they just keep saying, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And it wasn't just a matter of time when that person was raised up out of that bed simply by the mention of that name because there is salvation in that name. So when you speak that name, expect salvation, expect healing or deliverance or safety or preservation or protection or victory to be given to you or ministered in that situation because you're mentioning that name in faith. Uh, thirdly, we see that in the name of Jesus, there is eternal life. First John 5 and verse 13, these things I've written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So John is writing, he says, in the name of the Son of God, in the name of Jesus, there is eternal life. And uh, what is very interesting is that in the Greek, there are different words for life, like bios, which has references biological life or physical life. But in a, whenever the New Testament is referring to eternal life, it uses a very specific Greek word called zoe. And this has references the God kind of life. I mean, this is a life that originates not from earth, but it originates from God. It is a, the life that God has in himself. So when the Bible is talking about eternal life, the Zoe life, it's talking about the life that comes from God, the abundant life, the God kind of life. And what John is saying is, I want you to believe, those of you who believe in the name of the Son of God, you have eternal life, Zoe 
life, the God kind of life. Uh, it, it, is, it is life that is unending, it's life that is eternal. The quality of this life is eternal. But what I want us to understand that there are other aspects to this eternal life that the New Testament reveals. For instance, in John chapter 1, uh, John says, In him was life, that is Zoe, and the life was the light of men. This light shines in darkness, and the darkness cannot overpower it. So it's saying that this eternal life comes with light. It comes with influence. This light enlightens people, and this light shines in darkness and expels darkness out. Darkness cannot overpower this. So eternal life, the life of God, when it comes into us, it dispels darkness. It overthrows and uh, drives out everything that is of darkness. And darkness, as far as John's writings are concerned, has to do with things of the world. It has to do with things of uh, that are demonic. That's what darkness represents in the New Testament. So his life re releases light that dispels darkness. So this is eternal life. Just one aspect of, of eternal life. Uh, we can do an in-depth study on, on the Zoe kind of life in the New Testament. But the point is this. In the name of Jesus, there is eternal life. When we mention that name in faith, we can expect the life of God and the light of that life to act in that place, in your own being or for somebody else. Uh, the Zoe life of God will transform them, change them, will dispel darkness out of them all in that name. Uh, just a couple of more, maybe two more things, and maybe we'll stop here for, for today. Uh, we must understand that in that name, we have been washed, sanctified, and justified. This is chapter 13. I'm looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 through 11. Paul is writing to the Corinthian believers that they came from a very uh, uh, you know, ungodly Background. He writes this, he says in verse 9, Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 11, And such were some of you, but you were washed you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. So Paul is saying, you know, you guys came from all kinds of background. That is true for us as today as well. You know, we come from all kinds of background and all kinds of life experiences we've gone through. But he says, today things are different because of that name, in the name of of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are washed, that means you're completely clean. You are sanctified, that means you're set apart for God, you've been made holy, and you're justified, that means you've been put right with God. There is no judgment against you, no condemnation against you, and it all happened in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. So in his name, this has happened. And as a believer, you need to know this is what is yours in Jesus' name. You can say boldly in his name, I am washed, I am sanctified, I am justified because I have believed in that name. And that name has done this, has brought this into my life. And the same thing we can do when we, we speak to other people. You see, you might see a person and they might be in a real mess in life. Uh, they might have you know, gone into all kinds of things and so on. But understand that in the name, that person can be washed, sanctified, justified. No matter how uh, difficult or how depraved or how uh, uh, corrupt a situation they may find themselves in right now, the name of Jesus is more than enough to see them washed, sanctified, and justified. And that's why we can offer the name of Jesus to people who are in those in difficult situations. Nothing is impossible. The last thing I want to reference here in chapter, and this is chapter 14, is that you and I are baptized in the name of Jesus. So uh, when Jesus commissioned his disciples, he said, go baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. So the apostles went and throughout the book of Acts, whenever they baptized people, the book of Acts records, they baptized in the name of Jesus. Now that does not mean they didn't follow the, uh, the instruction Jesus gave, but when they followed the instruction, they did it in Jesus' name, meaning by the authority he gave. So in Jesus' name, they baptized people in the name of the Father, the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. So, but I want us to understand the significance of being baptized in the name of Jesus. That when, when somebody baptizes you in the name of Jesus, uh, by the authority of Jesus, in the name of the Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, what that means is this, that you are taking on that person. I'll reference this scripture in, in Galatians 3.27. It says, as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. That means when we are baptized in Jesus' name, you're saying, I have put on Christ. From now on, I'm going to reveal Jesus in the way I live. I'm going to model my life after him so that he is seen in and through my life. So you who have been baptized in his name, you have put on Christ. Let Christ be truly seen in you and through you. You bear that name. You carry that name. You know, today... I'm going to pause here. We've looked at different aspects of the name of Jesus. We said we have to use that name with faith in that name. We have to step out boldly, use that name. And then we have started looking at all that's in that name. And we covered a few things. There is forgiveness. There is salvation. There is eternal life. We are washed, sanctified, and justified in that name. We are baptized in that name. So all that is there in the name of Jesus. In the coming weeks, we're going to continue our journey to the New Testament to look at all that is in that name. And the point is this, that as believers, we must know what's in that name and use that name with faith in that name, expecting things to happen. Remember, God has said, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess in that name, that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Lordship of Christ is demonstrated through that name. So when we mention that name, we can do it with much confidence and much faith. You know, our worship team is going to lead us uh, in, a, in a short time of worship. But before they do that, I want to give an invitation to anybody who's never received Jesus Christ into your life. As we heard today, there is salvation in that name. There is forgiveness of sins in that name. There is eternal life in that name. It's all there. And that name is right there. All you have to do is call on his name. And he's right there. The Bible says anyone, anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. I want to take a moment to help you call on that name. After I, we do this prayer, the worship team will lead us. And then I'm going to come back. And then we're going to pray for the needs of people. That there, there will be people who are watching us at this time, and there are needs in your life, I want to take a few moments to just minister to you so that you can receive a miracle in the name of Jesus. But right now, if there's anyone who wants to receive forgiveness of sins, eternal life, salvation, I want to help you call on the name of Jesus. Would you pray, pray this prayer with me, please, if you've never done this before in your life? Just say this with me. Lord Jesus... I am a sinner. I need to have my sins forgiven. And I call upon your name. Come, forgive my sins. Come into my life to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I receive your salvation. I receive eternal life in Jesus' name. And help me follow you the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Oh uh -huh. 
Thank you, worship team, for leading us in that time of, of worship. I want to take a few moments to pray right where you are. 
You heard about the power of the name of Jesus, how wonderful that name is. Lay your hand on your part on, on the part of your body you want Jesus to heal. If you, if you can't, cannot do that, just lay your hand on your head or on your chest. That's okay. And uh, I want to pray from here. If you need healing in your body, deliverance in your mind, your emotions, deliverance from demonic oppression, things that de demons are troubling you, with, remember there was power in that name. I'm going to speak in a very simple way. It's not the sound of my voice. It's not, you know, the aggression of how my speech but it's the power of the name of Jesus that will touch you right where you are. The Holy Spirit is right there, as close as the mention of his name. And I'm expecting that as we join our hearts together, our faith together, that things will happen in your life because of his name. Let's pray. And I want you to receive this by faith. In the name of Jesus, I take authority over every evil work. I take authority over sickness and disease. I take authority over every spirit of infirmity, every spirit of arthritis, I command you to come out. Every spirit of paralysis, I command you to come out. Every spirit of infirmity that's holding the bodies of people, I command you in Jesus' name to leave. Break hold, break the hold of every affliction on your body. I command every oppression off of your mind to go in the name of Jesus. Be made whole. Be healed in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for those who are in need uh, in various situations. There are miracles in that name. So Lord, I speak the name of Jesus over their situation, over their finances, over their workplace, over their relationships. I speak the name of Jesus and let the salvation that's there in that name Touch their lives and let things turn around. Let there be miracles taking place in the name of Jesus. Let the angels of God go into their life situations and cause miracles to happen, things to happen for their benefit and for your glory in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Father. Thank you for doing it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, we love to hear from you. So please take a moment to send us a testimony. You can send an email to us or you could video record your testimony, a short video, one or two minutes, and send that to us to the email that you see on the screen, testimony at apcwo.org. Remember, you can send it as an email or send it as a short video. Where you share your testimony and we can share it with others and glorify the Lord. We are grateful to you for doing that. And remember to share this message with as many people as you can, because God's people need to know the mighty name of Jesus. Tell them to listen to this series. Tell them to download the free book and study and learn and understand and receive a personal revelation of the mighty name of Jesus. So bless others with this message. Until next time, remember that we love you. Jesus loves you. Continue strong in him. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet fellowship of his Holy Spirit continue with each of us always. Amen.